The other day, Shauna Feely, a neighbor of mine, called me with a question. She had an old chair that had definitely seen better days. Everything about it seemed to need attention. She really wanted to make it part of her home, but it needed so much work she wondered if it was worth the effort. So I went over, took a look, and suggested we bring the chair back here for a makeover. So where'd you get this chair? Uh, I got it from my in-laws. They acquired it about 35 years ago. They got four of them for a uh, dollar at a yard sale. <laughs> 25 so, cents a piece, 25 huh? cents a piece, and they use them for a while, and then they've been in their garage. Uh, this has probably got the original finish on it. If you look, you can see it's all crazed. That's typical of what happens to these finishes after, well, in this case, more than 100 years. Right. Uh, and also, you can tell down here, too, it's just black. Uh, but before we get into the refinishing, I want to point something out to you. You know, this is pretty wobbly. Yes, I right? see that. So my thought is, um, if we're going to invest all this time and energy in refinishing it, that we ought to probably make sure you can sit in it. That would be a good idea. <laughs> we begin our rebuilding process by removing a pressed fiberboard seat, revealing something much older below. Oh, ah. well, that's what it's supposed to look like, sort of. This is the original seat right here. Okay. This is a uh, hand caning. Very nice job. And even to this day, uh, this type of caning still has to be woven. Right. So what do you think? I mean, you can, uh, we could probably find uh, another a replacement seat, or we could go back Well, I think seeing as we're going and doing the full effort here, I'd like to do the caning. We remove the old cane seat by first snipping out the center with scissors. Okay, I think we'll have better luck reaching the rest of this if we turn it over and go at it from the bottom. Then cutting what remains using a utility knife and a fair amount of patience. All right, so let's turn this over for the last little bit here. Getting an idea of how difficult the caning might be. <laughs> it's an art. I can knit and I can sew, so and it's another variation on that kind of stuff. Well, we're ready to start taking this apart. But okay. Before we do, uh, let's take some masking tape right here. I can give you a piece. Just right. tear off little pieces, and we're going to label all the parts uh, so that when we put this back together, we'll put it back. That makes sense. That seems like the step my husband would forget and I'd have a pile of wood in my basement. <laughs> okay. All right. We're well, ready to it. dismantle. Now, this, this chair is put together with both glued joints and with screws. So let's start by taking the screwed parts uh, apart first. Now we're going to have to go to brute force okay. to get this apart, although I don't think it's going to take much. Um, there are a couple ways to do this, but most com usually I do it by tapping the joints apart. This is a hammer that I've just wrapped some cloth around so we don't dent the wood. But this is an even better tool. This is a dead blow mallet. There's okay. lead shot in here, and it's going to transfer more force to the wood without uh, damaging the wood itself. Whoops. Oh, look what you did. <laughs> Now sometimes, if these are really strong in here, I might leave them. I might, I wouldn't force them out. Okay. Um, I just want to be sure now that they're loose. See, they're loose. They're not coming out easily, but they're... There we go, here it goes. I'm okay. Move them a little bit. Now we've got to separate these, all these joints at the same time, there's eight of them here. And you pointed out to me earlier, there was some small nails. A pair of diagonal cutters ground to a sharp point is the perfect tool for removing embedded objects like these. Now this is an adjustable clamp. And normally it would be used to, you know, squeeze things together. Right. But this one is reversible. We can take this end off, mm. put it down here. That's cool. And it becomes a spreader to right. push things apart. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, this one's. There, there we, we go. go. Okay. There. There we right. go. Huh? <laughs> Again, if I get one of these that's really in here and it just doesn't feel like it's, you know, loose, we can always leave it. And that may be one right there. Okay. So for this, probably our dead blow mallet is going to work best. Beautiful. Oops. <gasps> weren't expecting that. Huh. Well, it didn't. Yeah, that probably was cracked. I think so. I didn't really. <gasps> uh... 
Wow. I'm glad you did that one. Well, that's not supposed to happen. <laughs> I have to be more Can you gentle fix it? Now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I wish you hadn't done that. Oh, come on. You did that. <laughs> I did. Guilty. All right. No, but it's easy enough to fix. What's happened is the end of uh, the stretcher is just broken off, this piece right here. So we're going to fix this by making what's called a scarf joint. Come on over okay. to the bandsaw. To make the joint, we first cut off the damaged end at an angle. Then smooth the cut on the belt sander. Next, we trace the cut end of the spindle onto a small piece of oak and cut out the matching shape. Both sides or which side? Yeah, let's put it on both sides. This wood. We'll attach or scarf the new wood onto the old by gluing it. Before clamping, we'll drill a hole and insert a small nail to keep the two pieces from slipping as the clamp pressure is applied. Once the glue has dried, we remove the clamp and small nail. Then, using an undamaged spindle as a pattern, we outline the shape for the new end. It's back to the bandsaw for some rough cutting and then a bit of final shaping using a wood rasp and sandpaper. All right, there we go. Well, this is the other repair job we've got to do. Mm -hmm. We were kind of rough on this chair, I know, chair, I think we? we might have mangled it a little bit. <laughs> Actually, probably there, there may have been some cracks here. And you know, we just, right. in tugging on it, caused them to, uh, to get worse. To repair this spindle, which is broken in the middle, we'll first drill holes into the broken ends. Good. Pull the trigger a little bit more. Good. Apply some glue. Insert a dowel, then press the broken ends back together. Push it down. That's pretty cool. You'd never know. Okay, now we're going to have to glue this chair together in sections. Okay. Uh, and then each section has to kind of go together all at once. Mm -hmm. You'll see why in a sec. Right. And then we'll put the major sections together to the chair. Um, that way, if anything isn't fitting quite right, we'll catch it before the glue dries and we can make a little adjustment. Okay, okay good to So know. this is the bottom of the back. Um, I'm going to put some glue in these holes and spread it around. If you could take the spindles mm -hmm. here, just paint some glue on those. Sure. Okay, and T. Okay. Starting to look like my chair. We can apply a little pressure to these joints. Okay. Now you always like to glue it back together before you strip it. I do, and that's kind of just a personal preference in a way. Uh, the couple reasons that I like to. First of all, we've got all of our labels on here. If we strip it, we'd have <laughs> to take would... those off and, right. and put them back on in the right spot. But also, you notice when we glued up, uh, some of the glue squeezes out onto the surface and it's easy to clean that glue off while the old finish is on here. I, I don't have this many clamps at my house. If I'm trying this again... Well, just forget it then. <laughs> really? <laughs> uh, well, I'll come borrow yours then. Obviously, yeah, it can take a lot of clamps. Right. Uh, would you like to see, though, something you can use uh, instead of a clamp if you don't have enough yeah, or any at all? Yeah, I would Yeah, okay. that'd be great. Ah, rope. Everybody's got rope. Piece of rope. <laughs> uh, a clothesline like this works really well. Okay. Let's just, for example, say we wanted to run a clamp across here. Mm -hmm. well, here's how you could do it using a piece of rope. Um, I like to tie just a loop. Mm-hmm in the end like this, okay? I'll wrap the rope around the legs and tie off the ends. Then insert a short piece of wood and begin twisting it. The rope gets tighter. To keep the pressure on, I just wedge the wood beneath one of the stretchers. Well, now we're gonna take it off. Take it all off. Okay. <laughs> okay. You say so. Um, chairs back together, we're gonna strip off the old finish here. This is a uh, kind of a semi-paste. It's a little bit thick. You can see here, and the reason I've chosen this is that it's going to stick to the surface a little bit better. What, what kind of finishes are coming off? 
I think what we're dealing with here is probably varnish. Now the real key to getting this finish, or any finish, off easily is to lay on a heavy coat of stripper, don't overbrush it, and give it time to do its work. When the surface blisters and looks loose like this, you should be able to lift off the old finish using a putty knife without the need for a lot of scraping or scrubbing. Okay, that's about all we're going to get with a putty knife. I want to move over now to some steel wool. Getting the old finish out of recesses in carvings and turnings is better done with medium coarse steel wool. Oh, these look a lot better. Now this is a, a brass bristle brush. Soft bristle brass brushes also work well when it comes to cleaning out nooks and crannies. You'll find these brushes in the paint department. Feel like a dentist? Another tool that can be very useful is a simple piece of wood dowel that has been sharpened to a point using an ordinary pencil sharpener. There's still some old finish in there. And finally, one of my favorite tricks for doing that last bit of cleanup on spindles and legs is a piece of jute twine. This has really come out very nice, uh, great wood. There's one final step I want to do in terms of removing the old finish, and that's to, uh, to wa do a wash. This is lacquer thinner. This wash will remove any residue left by the stripper. Now a quick sanding with fine paper. We won't need much sanding because this type of stripping does not raise or roughen the wood grain. Well, I leave Shauna to finish up the sanding while I head off to the Home Improvement Center and go shopping for some materials. We'll need some stain. I'm going to pick up three different colors, a polyurethane varnish for a top coat, and a can of paste wax. Shauna's not completely sure what color she prefers, so we test the three that I bought by applying them side by side on the bottom of the chair. I think I like the walnut. We've got a winner, so let's get to work. On projects like this, I like to apply the stain with a brush and work it well into the recesses. Then give it time to soak into the wood and finally wipe off the excess. This is definitely the fun part. I usually do a chair like this in sections, starting at the top and working downward. One final wipe and we'll let the stain dry overnight. This is a tack cloth. Okay. And since we're now going to be putting our first kind of coating on here, mm -hmm. I want to make sure that we get all the dust off this that might have settled on it overnight. Now this is shellac. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, absolutely natural product, um, actually produced by bugs. Now this dries very fast. Okay. I'm using the fast drying shellac to seal in the stain before we move on to our next step. Okay. It's looking great. All the drips. So let's let this dry. This won't take long, maybe a half an hour or so. So this is very fine steel wool, four zeros. It's about the finest you can get. Mm -hmm. and, and what we're doing here is just kind of knocking some of the sheen from the shellac down a bit. Now this is called glazing liquid here. It's just a medium really to carry the color okay. out of the chair. And these are uh, colorants or tints. Now what we're trying to do here is to add some dark coloration to the recesses for two reasons. It'll help highlight the details in the carvings and turnings, and it'll give the chair an aged look by simulating the kind of dirt and dust that would have accumulated over decades of use. We're coming down to the finish now. Can't wait. <laughs> um, what we're doing now is putting on a clear top coat. The top coat, in our case polyurethane varnish, is what will protect the surface from wear, add a pleasing sheen, and give the wood a feeling of depth. Shauna Feely's century-old chair has seen a lot of use and more than its share of neglect. But today, all that's changing as we bring this flea market find back to life. We've made it strong by rebuilding the joinery and beautiful by refinishing it. One challenge remains. After prying off the fiberboard seat, we discovered the original but badly deteriorated hand caning underneath. Since we've come this far, Shauna's decided she wants to reweave the seat. So we're going to the source to find out how. Hey, Rhonda. Hey, Ron. How, how are, are you? you? Say hello to Shauna. Hi, Rhonda. Hi, Shauna. This and is really nice this is our creation here. Can't wait to see it. Here. Beautiful. Oh, Look at nicely. that. That's gorgeous. Yeah, Ron, hook me up. You yeah. did a good job. Nice, <laughs> nice work. So. This is the cane that we're going to use to start weaving your chair with. Now, where does that come from? This is, comes from the rattan plant. It actually grows in Indonesia. And let me show you a sample here. This is rattan, like they use in rattan furniture. The same it's, thing. It's the same thing. It looks like bamboo on the outside, but whereas bamboo is hollow, this is solid. 
and they peel off this outside bark and into different widths, and that makes the cane that we use to repair chairs with. So where do you start? Well, we start by figuring out where, how many holes there are in the chair. We have to center the cane. These are called caning pegs. We use them to hold the ends of the cane as we're working. And then you can put that through and you can grab it underneath there and pull it down, so whichever way you want to go. going to come straight across and no the weaving, top. Right? No Just weaving at this point. Okay. The first three steps, there's I like no weaving. This. this is nice and easy. So. Starting step three now, and which is the second time we're going front to back. Okay. After this step, you will start weaving. Okay. So this is your last easy step. So how's it coming? It's going great. It's great. She's doing a great job. Tucson, step four, which is the first weaving step but this will set us up for the fifth and sixth step, which are the diagonals. Through the little boxes. Well, Rhonda, do you have any final uh, words of wisdom or advice here? Well, you've got enough cane here, I think, to finish the chair. Okay. And I hopefully have given you enough knowledge to you go You have. Ahead. It was a great lesson. I think we're off to a good start. Yeah. I feel very confident. Thank you for all your good tips. That well, the heavy lifting. Okay. Thank you very Bye. much. Thank Thanks, you. Rhonda. Good luck. Bye-bye. A couple of weeks later, Shauna calls to say she's finished her caning, and I head over to take a look. Wow. I'm impressed. <laughs> Thank you. That is a really good job. Thanks I mean, lot. it looks totally professional to me. It took a long time, though. It's a time, you know, labor of love type thing. Listen, there's one more thing I want to do, which is not going to change the way the chair really looks, but it's going to make it feel great, and that's to put some paste wax on it. Okay. Um, I like to apply this with a, a pad of steel wool. This is the finest, 40000. Right. I let the wax dry for a few minutes, then buff it out with a soft cloth. Want to help? You want to shine? No. If you remember, I have another chair, a sister chair to this. We should take a oh, look at right. it. Oh, that's yeah. right. There was a, there was a, there were originally a group and you got two, right? I have two, yeah. You have the other one here? I do. Oh, let's take a look. Yeah. There we go. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I had forgotten. I have forgotten what we started with. It's incredible. Uh, well, this is, a, this is a perfect before and after, isn't it? It is. It's nice to see it that way. It gives me some inspiration. The good thing is we had good bones. We had a good chair to start with. Nice wood, nice patina, plenty of carving in here, and uh, we've just taken advantage of all of that. I couldn't have done it without you.